this video, I'd like to share with you what I'm calling my 2018 reading project. I'm not here to tell you that I will stop buying books until I finish my TBR because that would be a big lie. But I honestly feel that I have some amazing books here that must be read as soon as possible. I bought them because I wanted to read them. So I went through all my bookshelves and I picked up books that I will provide, that probably will provide great reading experiences and unforgettable reading experiences in 2018. And I read them during uh, 2018 according to my mood. So this will be a very flexible TBR when it comes to the months I'll be picking up each book, but I used this list at a, as a priority list and here is the challenge, here is the catch. I only read other books when I finished these ones. I also want to do a short review, more like a book recommendation video for each one of these books as long as I enjoy them of course, so you can expect more book talks on this channel in 2018. So let's get to it. I picked up 36 books in total and I divided them into four categories, four groups, and 99% of them are classics or modern classics and I'm really, really proud of this list. So the categories are 12 books I think I will love, 4 books I'm not sure I'll enjoy but I want to try, 70 children's classics or younger reader books, and Three books that are Brazilian classics that I should have read many years ago. So there are 36 books in total and I will show them to you now. The first one is Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. The novel was first published in 1957 in Italy after the manuscript being smuggled by an editor after it was refused for publication. The book tells the story of the fictional Russian physician and poet Yuri Zhivago. It takes place between the Russian Revolution of 1905 and the Civil War. The Count of Monte Cristo has been on my TBR forever, and since this copy grabbed my eye, I decided to read it. It will probably be the first book I will read in 2018. The book was written by Alexander Dumas in 1844. I have only read one book by him many years ago, The Queen Margot, and I remember enjoying it a lot. The Count of Monte Cristo is one of Dumas' most famous works. It's a story of vengeance and forgiveness that centers on a man who is wrongfully imprisoned, he escapes, and he wants revenge. Book number three is Master and Margarita, written by Mikhail Bugarov in the Soviet Union between 1928 and 1940 during Stalin's regime. The story concerns a visit by the devil to the officially atheistic Soviet Union. I really don't know what to expect of this book, but I have a feeling that I will enjoy it. And yes, I'll be finally reading Villette, written by Charlotte Bronte in 1853. After a family disaster, the protagonist, Lucy Zoll, travels from England to the fictional French-speaking city of Villette to teach at a girls' school. There, she is drawn into adventure and romance, and since I know a bit about Charlotte Bronte's life, I look forward to reading this one. The Tenant of Windfell Hall is another Bronte book that I've been wanting to read for a while. Anne Bronte is an author I haven't read and I really want to know if she is as talented as her sisters. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen is another book I'll be reading in 2018. It was the first of Jane Austen's novel to be completed for publication in 1803, but it was not until after her death that it was published along with Persuasion. Mothenga Abbey is a satire of gothic novels, which were quite popular in the end of the 1700s, and it is also a coming-of-age story which sounds really interesting, right? I also want to read Mansfield Park, and then I will have read all the Jane Austen's books, finally. Mansfield Park is considered Austen's most controversial novel due to its brief mention to the British slave trade, Vile Bodies is a 1930 novel by Evelyn Waugh, a satire of the decadent young London society between World War I and World War II. I have a full book presentation of this Folio Society edition, I'll put the link in the description. I'm really excited to read another book by Elizabeth Gasco, and the next one will be Wives and Daughters. I don't own a hard copy yet, and unfortunately, there aren't many nice copies of Gasco's works out there, so I'll be listening to the audiobook. Do Andrei's Dream of Electric Sheep will also be on my TBR as my first Philip K. Dick book. I love Blade Runner, so. I guess I will enjoy this novella too, and this Folio Society edition is really awesome, don't you think? 
Atonement is also on my TBR, written in 2001 by Ian McEwan. It is set in three different periods, 1935 England, Second World War England and France, and present-day England, and it covers an upper-class girl's half-innocent mistake that ends up ruining lives. And next we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, a book that many of you enjoy a lot and I shamefully haven't read. I've got this Brazilian edition, which is pretty cool, so I'll probably be reading this one in Portuguese because of this illustrated edition that seems to have some very nice extras. So these were the books that I really think I will love. Let's jump into the I'm not so sure I will love list. First we have Great Expectations. I have this Everyman's Library copy, which is very nice, and I'll try to complete my Everyman's Library Dickens collection in 2018, but I started listening to the audiobook twice this year. I enjoyed it, but I don't know why, you know, it haven't grabbed my attention as I expected. I hope it is as good as A Tale of Two Cities. I'll give it another chance because I think this book is one of those big ones a reader who enjoys reading classics must know. Don't be upset, but I'm not sure I will enjoy Lord of the Flies, but I'll give it a go. To be honest, I have started this one multiple times, but somehow I find the first couple pages so boring. But it is a famous book and the story is definitely the kind of adventure I usually enjoy, so in 2018 I hope I'll finally read it. And here we have Midnight's Children. I will read the blurb and then I will explain myself. Midnight's Children is a 1981 novel by Summer Ruchiti that deals with India's transition from British colonialism to independence and the partition of British India. The plot itself sounds incredible, but magical realism is tricky, you know. I have read some magical realism books that I really loved and other ones that I hated, so I don't know what to expect from Midnight's Children. Next, a more modern novel, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. And here's why I'm not so sure I will enjoy it. I love Sandman, the graphic novel, but in 2017 I have read Stardust. It was the first novel I read that was written by Neil Gaiman. Um, I wasn't impressed, you know. Something about his style, his prose, I can't explain, but I was... I don't know. But I want to read American Gods because many people love it and I want to watch the series one of these days, but not before I read the novel. I really don't know what to expect. The premise of the book sounds incredible, but I hope the overall writing pleases more than Stardust. Now for the 17 children's classics I'll be reading. First, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Yes, I haven't read the original story yet, and this Folio Society edition is gorgeous. Next, my first Jack London book, The Call of the Wild. This one is really famous too, it was published in 1903 and it is set in Yukon, Canada during the 1890s gold rush. The central character of the novel is a dog, so I'll probably love it. I also want to finish reading Laura Ingalls Wilder's The Little House series. In 2017, I read the first three books and in 2018, I want to read books 4 to 9. On the banks of Plum Creek, by the shores of Silver Lake, The Long Winter, Little Town on the Prayer, These Happy Golden Years, and The First Four Years. There is something in these stories I can't explain. The author takes the reader to other times in which life was harder, you know, but also more authentic. There is no plot. They are very descriptive books. And this series is very, you know, unpretentious. And at the same time, it is deeply captivating. I also want to read two books from the Puffin and Boom collection. The first one is A Little Princess by Frances Hoxton Burnett, first published as a book in 1905. And a nice trivia I found out on Wikipedia. This novella appears to have been inspired in part by Charles Bronte's unfinished novel Emma. The first two chapters of which were published in Cornhill magazine in 1860 featuring a rich Harris with a mysterious past who is apparently abandoned at the boarding school. I also want to read Heidi, published in 1881 by the Swiss author Johanna Spari. I know the story, which is really famous, 
but I haven't read the book and it sounds like the kind of book I would enjoy. The 101 Dalmatians is a 1956 children's novel by Tori Smith about the kidnapping of a family of 101 Dalmatians. I recently got this Folio Society edition which is stunning and I look forward to reading it. Next on my list is A Wrinkle in Time, a science fantasy novel written by the American writer Madeleine Lango, first published in 1962. Many of you have recommended this book to me, so I want to give it a go. The Midnight Folk is a children's fantasy novel by John Massfield, first published in 1927. I read that it has pirates, witches, lost treasures, and talking animals. It sounds fun, and the illustrations in this photo society edition are beautiful. Next, I'll finally read Little Men. Now, Little Women are one of the most cherished books to me, and I always wanted to read more about the characters and what happened to them after Little Women. I found the second-hand copy and I really look forward to read Little Men or Life at Plumfield with Joe's Boys. This one was first published in 1871. The Mark of the Horse Lord is also on my 2018 TBR. I recently got his Fully Society edition and the plot sounds like something I really enjoy. It's set in Roman Britain, you know, about a guy who looks like the king. It sounds fun. I also be reading The Little Grey Man. I recently bought a slightly foxed edition of this classic. The last children's books on my 2018 TBR is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, a book about a castaway who spends 28 years on a remote tropical desert island near Trinidad, encountering cannibals, captives, and mutineers before being rescued. The book was written in 1719, and I read more Flanders in 2017, and since I loved it, I wanted to include a Daniel Defoe's novel on my 2018 list. And finally, and thank you if you're watching this video <laughs> until now, I have now three books from my country, they are considered classics here, and two of them I've been skipping for a while. The first one is Don Casmurro, considered the masterpiece by Machado de Assis, which is probably the best Brazilian writer. It is a tragic love story which mirrors Othello, and is set in 90th century's Rio de Janeiro. Next, by Clarice Lispector, A Hora da Estrela. I recently got a beautiful special edition. The title in English is The Hour of the Star. Clarice Lispector's short stories are superb. If you want to try a Brazilian author, I would recommend her short stories, but The Hour of the Star has been on my TBR forever. Lastly, The Complete Tales of Monteiro Lobato. If you ask me about my favorite Brazilian children's books, I would say Lobato's stories. But I don't know his more mature works, and since I recently picked up a nice edition, it is finally time to read it. This is my list, 36 amazing books, I have high expectations for my uh, reading year, and I really want to know what you plan for 2018, which books do you want to read? Let me know down below, and if you want to read some of the books I mentioned, let me know too, because maybe we can do uh, like a read-along. Happy New Year to you all, I see you all in the next video, bye-bye!